Professor Shashikaran from uh, Film University. Santosh Padariji, General Secretary of uh, Prabhachitra Mandal. Pavitra Margarita Ji, who is a Rajya Sabha member of parliament and also a uh, noted filmmaker uh, in the Northeast. And the uh, session will be chaired by Sri Utpal Dada Ji. Um, and I particularly like, like to thank uh, uh, Vijay Kumar Ji, Pavitra Ji and uh, um, and uh, Utpal Dattaji for coming all the way uh, from the south and uh, northeast of India uh, for attending this conference, uh, this seminar. I will hand over uh, uh, the comparing of the session is Satrika uh, Sanchalan Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. उस सत्र को आज फिर से हम थोड़ा आगे ले जाते हैं और आज का हमारा जो विषय है वो है रीजनल सिनेमा एंड इट्स ग्लोबल इंफ्लुएंस मैं आमतौर पे तो रीजनल सिनेमा के नाम पे मैं जो सोचता हूं कई बार कि मैं कल रात भर सोचता रहा रीजनल सिनेमा है क्या तो मुझे लगा तो हर फिल्म तो अपने आप में सिनेमा है जब मैं हिंदी फिल्म भी है वो भी एक रीजन की फिल्म है और चाहे वो गुजराती फिल्म हो या हॉलीवुड की फिल्म है वो भी हमारे लिए रीजनल सिनेमा एक तरह से क्योंकि उस रीजन से आता है तो रीजनल सिनेमा क्या है और इसका क्या इन्फ्लुएंस है जो आज हम देखते हैं जो भी इंटरनेशनल प्लेटफॉर्म में देखते हैं जब एक एक समय के बाद हम जाते हैं तो फिर वो किसी एक जगह की फिल्म नहीं होती है वहाँ पर तो सब के साथ हम देखते हैं तो वो किसी एक भाषा की नहीं होती है और सिनेमा के सिनेमा डजन है लैंग्वेज बैरियर तो मैं इस चर्चा को आगे बढ़ाते हुए मैं उत्पल जी से कहूँगा कि आप उसके आगे टेक ओवर करें थैंक यू नमस्कार गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम रियली हैप्पी एंड ऑनर्ड टू बी हियर Once we read in school, that where Anzal fears the full dance. Today I am in the same place. I am not good at English, neither good at Hindi. And Assam is too far from Mumbai. The film capital of India, and with all the limitations. I came here to share some of my views with you. And language is a barrier for me. I know that. And I know this is a scary learned people. They will correct my words if I speak something wrong. And I would love to speak in the end. So I should start with the Jack one. Respected Chair, fellow panel members, and colleagues, my dear friends, good morning to all of you. And uh, in the first place, I must thank the ICCR and the Frame University for conducting a seminar of <coughs> this nature because I feel in India, in our film industry, we need a lot of things to be taken up collectively and in the interest or overall interest of the industry. There are a few things which the government have to do. There are a few things which respective associations have to do. But all these things, a seminar of this sort and a collective approach will be of immense help. So let me first thank. And in yesterday's session, I was there all through and I found that very productive suggestions, very productive points are being raised. And if we continue to, or we pursue these sort of seminars and collective approach, and put together these ideas and ideologies, I'm sure the industry can benefit a lot. Now, my role in this session, that is the regional cinema and its global influence, I think 
I need to give a brief idea about the regional cinema's role today and what was in the past and what is going forward. This regional industry, in I am from the south and I am more familiar with the industry in south where I probably have to quote on and off on it. It is not that biased but it is the <coughs> reality and what I know about the subject. The regional industry, when we entered into the industry, it's about 35 years. It, the regional film, for example, a Tamil or a Malayalam film, was confined to the state only in terms of revenue. The films obviously made in their language, but we were living or surviving on a revenue from that state. But that is, of course, okay in that 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 point of time. But subsequently, the with the advent of the television channels, these films started getting little exposure outside the state. And because of that exposure, probably, it so happened that there is some revenue also generated from outside the state and an awareness about the film. And then what happened, the uh, advent of this uh, dubbing business, you know, the films in South made and dubbed in Hindi language, and those films coming into other regions, it is, of course, it was dubbed not only to Hindi, to Bengali, to Marathi and other languages. But that gave a little more exposure and the advent of, again, the multiplexes. Because earlier we had a problem because the films, when you bring it to a standalone big theater, it is impossible to get the revenue. Because at that point of time, the film, even a Malayalam film or a Tamil film coming to Bombay or <coughs> Delhi, would be mostly watched by those regional people and the penetration into the non-regional people was very low at that time. But after these multiplexes, we had the advantage of the film in small theatres where they could afford to show these movies with less people and survive. So this is, in this background, industry was okay surviving, but parallelly there was a problem, the cost of production and <laughs> related things were also increasing. A stage has come where the, the budget of making film went way ahead of the producers and the recovery possibility was not matched in those areas, even with this dubbing multiples and all those things. So where we now stand today, the first thing what happened is the OTT platforms. Now the OTT platforms have actually is revolutionizing this regional panel. I mean, regional problems because there is no more restrictions that a film has to be in, I mean, in a, any other or national language or in English language. As you and I know in the OTT platforms today, some of the top programs are not necessarily made in English. They are only subtitled in English and the viewership is pretty high. It is picking up very high. And even non-Indian films like Korean films, I mean, Istanbul from there, even French films are getting a big market in India itself. So it is being definitely reciprocated for Indian films also. I have a small report of the films in Indian films which did very well uh, in the last of course, the pandemic period did help a little, even otherwise, a Malayalam film titled Minnal Murali became the fourth in Netflix all over the world for in the non-English section, that is non-Hollywood films which has come. It is something really, really outstanding because when I analyzed or when we, our association of the chamber analyzed, a film a regional film, same is the case with another Sapata, a Tamil film in Amazon, has been viewed in 136 countries and they definitely would have made good revenues out of that also. And again another film, Sorai Putru in Tamil, they did very well, JB, and of course in Hindi also there is Shersha, and I don't know the reason for them, but in the past Chicho and all did wonderful business, or at least this has given an opportunity for the Indian films to world market. When initially or even in the past when Indian films had a presence in the world market, it was confined to the Indian diaspora initially or maybe 
some Asian countries like Pakistanis or <coughs> Sri Lankans or neighboring Ghana or some people, they only patronize. But when you see these numbers today in the in the in OTT platforms with such viewership and revenue or placement of fourth and all, it is very, very clear it is not only the Indian diaspora but rest of in, rest of the world, whether it is Gulf countries, whether it is Africans, whether it is Americans, whether it is French, wherever even Japan, definitely it has to be viewed by a good number of those people. So, I feel like the Korean films or uh, Spanish films getting increased business in India, the Indian films are also getting similar encouragement, viewership across the world and we no more need to depend only for, on the Indian diaspora to make revenue for our films. So this is one great advantage the OT platforms has given us. And this is the biggest opportunity, I think, even for regional cinemas. Because when the world is viewing a cinema, at the most they will say Indian cinema. They may not be going whether it is Tamil or Punjabi or Malayali or anything. They are not going to go into those details because subtitles is there. And they are okay with that. So this opportunity has to be encashed. Now, we have two way of moving forward in this business because the Indian market itself is a huge market when it comes to revenue. When, you know, thanks to our population. But if the original films in India itself can be propagated, which of course is happening now, and the viewership of the Indian regional cinema in other regions, that I believe itself is a huge business. We happened to see, or I was, <coughs> I was also part of the project uh, prepared pre-COVID in case if the films are going to be released directly to home and the viewership of such uh, films are going to be in this percentage of the people, what could be the revenue? So the, the, I have seen the report, the report, the very interesting thing is, let's say to safeguard the region, we will geographically block that particular state from the open OTT platform. The rest of the area we release the trip directly to home. In that case, the revenue possibility is projected to be at least 10 times of what we are getting today from outside the region. The reason being, when a Malayalam film is taken out of Kerala, supposing it is Tamil Nadu or Maharashtra or Bombay or Delhi, it is the people within the city or within that area where the multiplexes are there, they are likely to go. And not all. <laughs> we have seen the survey. Men prefer not to be going to these multiplexes, parking the car, waiting and seeing a movie. Maybe women in friend circle and now they move around and see more often. But in case, if these films can reach home directly, the number of people likely to see, by paying for it obviously, will be at least about 30, 40 times of what revenue is existing today. And of course, today's scenario, when I, my film is going to a Delhi agency or a distributor, there is a distribution fees, there is a theatrical fees, and in case if the theater is not proportionately filled, I'll have to pay the theater for the compensation for this uh, less occupancy. So all this put together, my revenue will be probably maybe one third of the ticket revenue. The rest is going by all these expenses. But in this process, if it is OTT, what is the damage? Upper limit, 25 to 30 percent of the carrier fees. The rest of the money is coming to you. And imagine this revenue source from the international market. It is huge, being huge for two, three reasons. Number one, a Indian in seeing an American a Malayalam film or a Tamil film or even the Delhi film in US, for him, ten dollar is not a big money. It is very, very reasonable. It can be more, even if it is on a payment basis. Ten dollars is about seven hundred rupees plus today, and 
if the producer is giving parting with 30 percent, 700, nearly 500 rupees, he's making a ticket. And the Indian diaspora population worked out, it is huge revenue for us. So these are the areas where our industry has to collectively come and move forward. Now, I just mentioned about South. I personally have something which is sad also, that is, I was the duty chairman last year, year before last, for the National Film Awards, and I was chairman for the East, Northeast, sorry. I've seen about 80 films from that region. And it is no exaggeration. Some of them are brilliant films. They are not only really brilliant, they are definitely deserving national and international exposure. The themes, the film based on Polo. I even never knew that Polo originated in Manipur. The, how Polo originated in Manipur. Today, the people who were pioneers, their life in agony because they can't even afford to maintain the horses. They can't afford to put their children into school. So, a beautiful movie which I think if it gets exposure, it will be one of the wonderful movies. Similarly, are some movies I've seen. And then I had some interaction with our friends, including the Minister of State. We had to discuss how to revive it. Because Indian South region, for whatever reason, not necessarily what we did, but our you know, previous generation people did, they picked up a local market. Whether it is loss or gain, the industry will continue. That is, it is growing also. But these films from Assam, Manipur, that Bodo language. Bengali films, yes, they are definitely very good, but I wonder whether they have an OTT market at this point of time. They don't have a big market outside, that's what I understand. But yes, within Bengal, they are strong. So I think mean, they're making money, whatever is happening is fine. So my point is, we have to, this sort of seminar should take into account, one, how to move the regional movies out of the region within India first. If an Assamese movie can do, if it's a good movie, which I'm sure from what I have seen and what we are producing in South, there are two things again. <laughs> the film which we produce at five or seven crores in Kerala is produced in by Assam. Equal quality, equally good, inspiring film at less than 50 likes or even much less. That means there is talent there is dedication, there is all out efforts, and you can make film at a much lesser cost also. That's also part of This is an evidence for it. Now these films have to get a market in the rest of it. I talked to our friend, I talked to many of them. Within India and outside India, if these films get exposure, I am telling you the revenue would be way, way ahead of what now, unless they make the money, how the industry will survive? Unless they make money, how can you expect more films to come? More experimental or uh, you know commercial or whatever you call it, but films have to come, so there has to be monetary support. Now, every time going to the government, give money, we like produce film, give money, produce film, it may not work. We have areas where we can ask government, areas where the government can do by way of policies or promotion or support, but going to government every time, paisa do, uh, Lee was totally from taxes. GST comes, we will say no GST for films. I said these are not practical things. These are just for the sake of protest or for the sake of uh, you know agitation being <laughs> shown. These people are doing for vested interest or whatever reasons. But realistically, you have to plan a strategy to take these films to other areas. And if you can do it in India, within India, if it picks up, I am sure. Outside India will automatically pick up because there is a mirror image of Indian diaspora first, and if Indian diaspora starts seeing, definitely non-Indians who are liking Indian films also will see. So this is the status or position of film, the regional films in here. Now coming to the point whether the films can be a soft power. Whether well, it is regional or Indian, as I said, it ultimately our regional films also will look like Indian films. That's no problem. But my simple uh, what's called uh, is intuition or logic is 
if the software industry, the Indian, Indians carrying me, and in a way conquer the <coughs> software industry in the world, why Indians cannot conquer the media and industry? Because we have enough talents in India. That I can assure you from my 35 years experience, we have brilliant technicians, we have brilliant writers, we have brilliant photograph DOPs, we have brilliant editors, and India is blessed with enough enough scope for subjects of Indian origin. In the study seminar, I don't remember who, but the gentleman made a very clear point. There can be thousands and thousands of movies coming out of Indian mythology, Indian literature, our Indian, you know, our uh, even the historically important things in India, which will be of appeal to, of course, you have to convert them to interesting films. If we are not capable, I wouldn't have made this point, but I know our technicians can do it, and if it is not happening, there is something wrong in the whole system. And world market is a big money market also. It's not that you're doing for charity or not for the nation, but you're making money as well. So, Indian presence in the international entertainment field can definitely, yesterday the music session, I have really liked it. The music means the Indian films, a lot of foreigners, non Indians, see, they love the color, the music, the dance. And it will continue to be so. That will always be a soothing thing for the uh, viewers. But only thing, you have to mix it in the right place, in the right way. If you just think that by music and through dances you can get away with the international viewership, it's uh, wrong. The film has to have a content. So, India has no shortage of content of Indian origin. Why I say Indian origin is there are two reasons from my experience. Number one, even if the Indian films start making more penetration, more business into the deeper pockets of the world. If we need to stay longer, we need to have an identity of Indian films. If we just copy a Korean film pattern, if we copy a Hollywood film pattern, in the first place, we can't tell it or you know, compete with them in terms today but because of their wide market, huge you know, existing revenues. So we better not compete with them, which is not our cup of tea. We have Indian subjects, Indian origin, and our regional films are very, very vital here. I feel in this particular context, regional films in India is a blessing. Had India been only one state, one language, probably we wouldn't have had this chance of producing so much of interesting movies because in our different region, different culture, different background, different habits, they think differently. They experience differently. All children and a real creation is coming out of some thought process, some experiences, some incidents in life. So this happens in regional means how in that region people react to it, how such situations are in those places. So the regional uh, the regional system in India, that it is ideal for our film industry or content creation. So these regional films, when they are genuinely thought and evolved and made into a good film, these films can do, and they are being made at a much reasonable cost when compared to Hindi films. So let us see the regional films making more entry, as I said, within India, that itself is a huge market, and the international market. Once these films are there in the international market, the image of our country, See, this image of, I have observed personally when we travel abroad, our films does give a credibility to the Indian image itself. And the more people see, the more people enjoy, they talk more about our country. And in India, yesterday's seminar, I believe it's the governor Saab who mentioned, Indians are not getting the deserving respect or appreciation in the international arena. Why? Because we have not projected Indians that way. So, I think it is time. I have made whatever out of my experience. So, I have shared that experience with you. And we have more panelists to speak on this issue. All I want to conclude, I mean before concluding, is the next generation youngsters 
please think positively, passionately. Indian entertainment industry can conquer, can take lead in the world market. There is enough potential, enough talent. Let us collectively move forward. Regional films will be a feather in the cap of the Indian industry. Let's make best use of it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vijay sir. Uh, Vijay sir, you have a Kerala Film Development Corporation ke former director bhi hai, aur ke chamber, jo hai film chamber ke bhi, uh, chairman rahe hai, aur, uh, film production of India ke bhi vice president. Hai. So, in the Thank you once again. Uh, I will tell you Satoshi. Santosh Patari ji, who is in Mumbai, 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 who is in First, I would like to thank organizers, ICCR and Flame University, especially Vinay Ji and uh, Yugal. They have taken lots of pain, I, I could say pain only, to organize this uh, seminar. So, our uh, topic is regional cinema and its global influence. Regional cinema in India is the cinema of the soil. It tells the stories of people who are loyal to the Indian culture and tradition. It has always upheld the nationalistic spirit. This spirit was created by Dada Sahib Farke and his contemporary uh, pioneers of Indian cinema. The mythological stories narrated through cinema in the silent era influenced the viewers and the studios used this medium to inculcate the patriotic spirit among the Indian. Regional cinema also created social awareness which was complemented to the social reforms undertaken by the social activists that era. While observing the impact of regional cinema at global level, I recollect the first uh, historical event when Indian cinema marked its presence globally, that is Marathi film Santa Tukaram, made in 1936, directed by Vishnu Kanta Damle and Fatehal of Prabhat Film Company which backed the Venice World Trophy for being one of the three best films in that International Venice Film Festival. So it was beginning of the Indian regional cinema to get recognition at the international level in the film uh, festival circuit. In the following decades when the films like Avaram or Sri Chatsu Bhisma Raj Kapoor gained the popularity and the commercial success abroad, the regional films like Amar Bhopadi or uh, Pathir Panchali directed by our masters Vishal Dharam, Satyajit Ray, they also drawn the attention of foreign audience through its content and cinematic excellence. Indian cinema created its own audience across the world, especially uh, Eastern Europe, Africa and the Middle East. A mother India director by Mahibu became international hit. And in the 60s, Shami Kapoor had huge fan uh, in uh, Baghdad. Uh, so we can list out several such examples where Indian cinema and Indian film artists were the center of attraction at various occasions abroad. The films produced in Israel, yesterday one of the speakers talked about uh, Desperado Square, which film was very much inspired by the film Sangam uh, in Afghanistan. They all were inspired by the commercial Hindi cinema. The international circuit recommended the work of Indian directors and audience was moved by emotional aura created by Indian artists. This parallel journey of commercial Hindi cinema and meaningful regional cinema is continued till today. My name is Khan, Kaipoche, Highway, even Gangubai, Katiyadawaldi were showcased at Berlin International Film Festival and along with this mainstream uh, cinema, Indian regional cinema also received the accords at Berlin. Malayalam film Othil by Jairaj, Marathi film Killa by Avinash Arun, uh, they received the prestigious crystal wear uh, at Berlin. Marathi blockbuster film Sairat by Nagaraj Manjuri and Tamil film Paruthi Viram by Amir and several such short films and documentaries by independent filmmakers received the appreciation at Berlin. 
Indian regional cinema has been creating buzz worldwide at international film festivals. Chaitanya Damane's court, Disciple, that is in Marathi, then Rama Shetty's Tithi, Kannada film, or Dr. Bijou's, uh, where he has made several films, and these are some significant examples which shows that not only Bollywood, but the regional cinema is also noticed by international audience. Commercial Hindi cinema and regional cinema in present era is more urban in nature and it is very attractive with its presentation. Whereas the parallel regional cinema is rooted to its culture and has very little influence of Western lifestyle. In India, we produce more than 50 Indian languages and right from dialect of Ladakh to the Kokoborok language of North East region. These films are narrating the stories of natives and depicting their lifestyle through the visuals. The young talented filmmakers from core region are coming up with their new concepts originated from their own lives and with limited resources they are making significant films. These films have international viewership. This viewership has, has been created by international film festival across the globe. Village rock stars, Burbul Can Sing, this film directed by Asami director Rima Das are very prominent examples of this kind. We must note that India nominated the regional films like Shwas, Jarikat 2, Court, Village Rockstars for the Oscars. And this process has helped these films to reach to the niche audience in USA. While explaining the nature of Indian cinema, Mr. P. K. Nair, the ex-director of National Archive, he once quoted that Indian cinema is a complex phenomenon. Now in the contemporary regional cinema, we can observe this complexity in the content, technique, as well as in presentation. These remarkable efforts by regional filmmakers have reached globally through film festivals, but not to the nook and corners where the regional audience resides. The unfortunate fact is due to the inadequate domestic distribution system in India cinema, Indian cinema market, the excellent work of the regional filmmakers is not even getting recognized by viewers of neighboring state. Unfortunately, we don't know Girish Kasarwandi's work or Agur Kumar Krishnan's work. Uh, in film societies, we are showing these films, but apart from film society audience, nobody recognized their work. Since these last three decades, commercial Hindi cinema and regional cinema has found its own audience worldwide especially in USA, Singapore, Malaysia, China, Japan, South Korea, and South Africa, etc., where they are eager to watch new releases. We have heard of the fact that Rajnikanth has huge followers in Japan and China. In fact, his films have fared very well in those two countries. In recent years, we have examples like Bahubali, Pushpa, RRR, or K KGF, which is recently released. These films have broken the set rules of Bollywood and have made mark in the world of cinema. I think now uh, Bollywood is also afraid about these films because most of the shows of the new Bollywood releases have been cancelled due to KGA, which, which I heard and which I observed recently. So they are also figuring in the na international platform. Since long, Telugu, Tamil and Malayalam films are being released in USA, UK, Malaysia and Singapore. In fact, they are released almost a day or two before they release in the Indian theatres. Telugu films have huge collection in the USA and Europe. You must be talking about the Telugu films. So Telugu cinema industry has developed a system wherein they have identified distributors working in the USA and Europe to take up the distribution of the films from Telugu in their region. These distributors sell tickets to their own community and friends and they host the show, I think we have ten shows on Saturdays and Sundays in local community and uh, in the small theatres. Uh, this is enough for local distributors and producers are also making the money. The same system is followed by the Marathi distributors in Australia and few Middle East countries also. But the problem in this setup is the distribution pickups only that they hear about in social media. So again, the boils down the fact that every film has earmarked certain amount of marketing to reach out. The commercial cinema produced in South, 
is finding its top place over the Bollywood abroad also. But the question remains again for the low budget meaningful cinema made at other regions which is confined only to the film festival circuit. Now it is time to portray the diversity of Indian culture and project it in a true colors rather than painting it in a Bollywood stage. So it is important that we must encourage the artistic regional cinema which represents the contemporary Indian society and showcase it to the world. This needs a, a encouragement not just from the centers to the bodies like NFDC, but also the state film development corporations have to take up the task of encouraging, cultivating and disseminating their own cinema, which in turns will help new region to start making cinema that can be watched worldwide. Government of Maharashtra, perhaps the first state of implement uh, such policies since its inception. State awards including cash prizes, tax fund uh, scheme, uh, then granted uh, aid scheme are remarkable steps taken by the government of Maharashtra which benefited the filmmakers. In 2016, government of Maharashtra decided to give exposure to Marathi film producers and directors in Khan Film Festival market. A committee selects every year, this committee selects three uh, Marathi films and the delegates of concerned films represent their films in Khan Film Festival regularly. The producers get opportunity to showcase their films to the world distributors and it enhances the chances of capturing world market. This platform also facilitates the dialogue between regional directors with the festival dele uh, delegates like critics, filmmakers, audience, they interact with the directors. Though government is fulfilling their part to promote film culture, by adopting such policies, I feel the major responsibility lies on the shoulder of makers and audience. The potential of regional cinema to convey the ethos of region should be tapped more effectively to draw the attention of world. Established production houses should come forward to support regional cinema. In recent years, we have seen that Bollywood personalities like Amitabh Bachchan, Ajay Devgan, Madhur Bhandarkar, who provided the financial support to the regional cinema like World. This film was directed by um, Umesh Kulkarni, then Apla Manus by Satish Rajwade, and the recently released of uh, Avijatri, the Bengali film, which was supported by Madhur Bhandarkar. So I must mention here that uh, Ch uh, Chaitanya Tamane, the director of Marathi film Court and Disciple, whose work is awarded in various uh, prestigious film festivals like Venice and Singapore, he got the opportunity to work with Alpha and Sukhara. And uh, he was working with the, that project Roma. So I feel later Alfonso involved himself in the production of Chaitanya Tamane's Disciple. So this type of associations with, uh, will certainly help the regional cinema to get the international collaboration. The strong network of OTT, uh, already sir has talked about OTT uh, platform and its uh, benefits. So I think it is also changing the scenario of regional cinema. In the corona period, the audience started watching the regional cinema very frequently. Films like The Great Indian Kitchen was appreciated by non-Malayalam audience at large. Uh, means I have observed that most of our Marathi groups, they are circulating the messages of uh, Great Indian Kitchen and most of the, our uh, housewives, they watch this film. So, these examples clearly indicate the interest created by the regional movies across the boundaries. OTT platforms have realized the need to distribute regional cinema in various territories. Ek Hazarachi Note, this film was directed by Shrihari Sathe, was the first Marathi film distributed by Netflix and it reached worldwide. Now the major work in Marathi cinema is available on OTT. I think we have Ajay Purkar here and Pawan Kende is already on OTT, so it is reaching to the more and more audience. The process of subtitling and dubbing in various regional languages enhance the probability of watching the regional cinema by the audience of other regions. Here I want to uh, say one uh, example that one uh, organization, they are giving the subtitles to the all classic films. So Pathir Panchani, uh, this Apotrayology is now subtitled in Marathi. So it is very easy to take those films to the uh, our regional students, those who can't understand Bengali as well as English. So it is very useful tool, I feel. 
OTT has provided a hope to independent filmmakers to get recognition and producers to recover their investment. At this juncture, maker of regional cinema should reinvent the context and work on the native themes and more concrete subject that will have the universal appeal. It will certainly bring out the glory and global viewership as well to the Indian regional cinema. Thank you very much. And I would uh, like to thank uh, Mr. K. Jaidev, who is from Tamil industry. He has made his film, Who Will Marry Thomas? So I have discussed this matter with him also. So he has given lots of uh, inputs to me. Thank you very much for your attention. Just by ensuring this diversity, the organizers made it much less, much, much less pedantic and more practical uh, in its approach. So the tentative title of uh, this talk is Rethinking, Rethinking the Telugu Cinema Imaginary, Creating a Progressive Social Vision, and Attempting to Build a Crossover Global Audience. Uh, a couple of disclaimers before I start. It's a work in progress, and it is also partly based on my earlier work, and the observations made are solely limited to mainstream Telugu cinema. So that is another uh, disclaimer that I would like to make. And this cannot be applied to other regional cinema. This will be solely based on observations on Telugu mainstream commercial Telugu uh, cinema. And uh, the questions that this panel is addressing are quite complex and manifold. Uh, in the next 15 minutes, I'll try to lay down my apprehensions and hopes for my beloved Telugu cinema. Most of these comments come from a deep engagement with Telugu cinema as an audience member. Uh, and some of them come from a certain exposure to global cinema and also as a researcher in cultural studies. But most of the comments are as an audience member. Uh, also, my submissions here will be limited to the representational side of the business, which I truly believe is the main offering of cinema. The aspect of visibility, providing a platform, policy discourse, as important as they are, uh, will be much more effective if the content is right. Now, uh, what you may ask is wrong with the representational aspect of Telugu cinema. Aren't they going pan-India? Uh, aren't they going global? Aren't they raking in the box office numbers? Uh, yes, they definitely are, and I'm quite happy about it. Uh, and also, the fact that they've managed to build a global distribution system, at least for the Telugu diaspora. Uh, so from here, I want to move to the uh, audience and the perception of audience. So what is the imagined audience of Telugu cinema as of today? The imagined audience is based, I try to understand what is the imagined audience by looking at a lot of interviews of Telugu filmmakers, which are uh, widely available on the internet now. Uh, so what comes out from that analysis is they're looking at mostly the Telugu speaking population in both the Telugu states. And there is also a market when they dub these films into other regional languages. And then there is the uh, large Telugu diaspora. Predominantly, a uh, lot of revenue is made from the North American uh, markets. Uh, but what is lacking is there is no ambition of a crossover audience. So that is what I'll try to you know, talk about. And uh, while it did happen with a few films like Bahubali with the Japanese and the Vietnamese audiences, but uh, that is more of an exception than the rule. Uh, from here, I'd like to ask a few questions. Uh, to help us think about this in a much more deeper way. So how do we define global influence? Do we limit ourselves to the Telugu diaspora who have a cultural affinity to the material that they are being presented with? Or doesn't it make much more sense to build a crossover global audience? And the conference is about soft power and the imagined audience for this soft power has to be a crossover global audience. Because they are talking about soft power, we have to look at audiences outside of the uh, Telugu language. For instance, Iranian cinema, which has developed a global audience over the years, that would be a good example. And uh, Hallyu, uh, the Korean wave, they have also developed a crossover audience. Now, if you had noticed, uh, as Santoshji was mentioning, uh, he did mention a lot of regional uh, cinema, a lot of regional filmmakers who made a mark in the film festival circuit. And I'm sure the audience members 
must have noticed there is no Telugu film in that space, or you will never hear of a Telugu filmmaker in that space. I am not talking about the mainstream space that is there, but you will not hear. That. And that has been the case for a long, long time now. So, uh, so why is it, you know, uh, the case? Is what I now I'll move to the uh, second part of my talk, which is basically the apprehensions that I have, that I have had as an audience more than a researcher, just as a viewer of Telugu cinema. Yeah, so I have certain apprehensions about Telugu cinema, which I sincerely believe are hindering its appeal to a global audience. I'll present a very unflattering representational perspective in this talk. Uh, another question that is thrown at me always, sometimes from my students, sometimes from family, friends, colleagues is, why is it that you criticize so much? Can't you find anything good about this world in, part in general and Telugu cinema in particular? My answer is always that criticism, in a lot of cases, comes from a place of love. And uh, in short, most of my laments in this talk are going to come out of love and love for Telugu cinema. And I want you to get global recognition. You could accuse me of craving for external approval, but who wouldn't want their culture to be loved and uh, respected everywhere, right? Uh, one of the major genres which the Telugu cinema offers is called as the commercial genre of the masala. So we'll try to understand what is this masala film genre, at least in the context of the Telugu uh, film. So it is mostly misogyny, sexism, toxic masculinity, and casteism, all of which are portrayed within an extremely violent backdrop. So these are the hallmarks of this genre within the Telugu film space. Uh, I would like to, because of lack of time, I can't, I can't kind of get into all of them. So I'd like to focus on just one aspect of this genre. I will try to talk about the misogyny aspect here. And then I will try to link it, link it with uh, you know, the global audience and why there is a you know, gap there. So the courtship scenes and song routines is what I would focus on as a unit of analysis for this particular uh, talk. So the courtship scenes, uh, song routines in Telugu films are more often than not ex exemplifying toxic masculinity and misogyny. So this kind of a film or this kind of a film grammar will it find it a lot of global audience or even me as an audience member. I also find it as repulsive a lot of times and it is impossible to venture into film festival circuits competing with other regional cinema like Malayalam, Marathi. Uh, which is for coming up with much, much better stories, uh, it was impossible to venture into these spaces and compete. Uh, so that is what uh, I wanted to focus on. I will try to talk about uh, a couple of films, uh, again, time constraints. There are a lot of films that have uh, been analyzed. Well, a lot of complex analytical thought goes into marketing and distribution. There is hardly any thought put into what these films are trying to say. Uh, and also, what do they stand for? And what are they like for? Whom do they include? Whom do they exclude? So I've used three film texts from the last two decades uh, to talk about these points and analyze some courtship sequences narratives from mainstream commercial television. I'll quickly go through uh, the first film, I will come to the name later, one of the characters of the film breaks into the house of the woman he is pursuing, uh, despite her giving clear indications as to her disinterest in him. After the break-in, he goes towards her bed as she is sleeping and sits on her by placing a pillow over her body. When she wakes and cries for help, he threatens her with a knife. He also gets her a cake as it is her birthday. When she refuses to eat, he forcibly feeds her. So this character is not the villain or the antagonist of the film, it is the hero of the film. And this film uh, was made in 2002 and it's aptly titled Idiot. And it is actually, uh, it's one of the biggest blockbusters of that uh, particular year. And it was remade into other regional languages also. And uh, all the Telugu films now, the mainstream Telugu films, uh, irrespective of whether it's an action entertainer or it's an actor, they have developed a grammar uh, for just this uh, courtship sequences. So there will be a courtship harassment song, which I have termed it as a courtship harassment song in every mainstream commercial Telugu film. Uh, I'll just very briefly uh, describe it. 
The courtship harassment song uh, in this particular film is particularly vicious as it involves the molestation, street harassment of women, of the women in uh, uh, institutional and public spaces like the college, the park, the canteen. And at no point in the film, until the manipulative and contrived moment of reciprocation, the woman is shown to be consenting. The idea of consent is outside the register of the Telugu mainstream cinema courtship rituals. The courtship ritual here includes a break-in, murder threat, molestation, assault, and the fact that the film glorifies the sequence mirrors the state of affairs, at least in the mainstream uh, film space. And all these are act, all these acts are performed by the aggressive hegemonic masculine hero, and not any antagonist in the film. We need not even get to that stage. That is even more. And uh, I talk about uh, another film. So this is made by the uh, director of Pushpa uh, in 2009. It's one of his early films, Sukumar. Yeah. So this is a sequel to his earlier successful film, which is also glorified talking. Now this second film is called Arya 2. So the courtship here gets into the realm of workplace sexual harassment as the lead character in the film possibly kisses the female lead in an office elevator. And the female lead is shown to be disgusted by this behavior and tries to complain to her superiors. And all the superiors make a comedy scene out of it and they call it a hallucination. And uh, she tries to present proof, then they call it the second stage of hallucination. And uh, these sequences remind one of the trials and tribulations of the Me Too victims who chose to approach the internal complaints company of their respective companies. So this obnoxious behavior is to be understood as courtship and as the film proceeds, the female lead must be around him in all the scenes with an amnesia of the assault as it is never again mentioned in the film. So I'll end this with one last film and then I'll go to the uh, third part of the paper. So this film is much more recent, 2018, coming in the thick of the uh, Me Too movement and the discourse in the country. So the hero in the film also follows a similar courtship ritual of stalking, violating and violating the personal space of the female lead. I won't get into the details but I'll very quickly uh, talk about how this particular aspect of stalking is used in the trailer to market the film. So that also speaks volumes about what Telugu filmmakers think is you know, good content to be marketed. There are a lot of other aspects in the film, but they choose to highlight the stalking sequence in the trailer. Uh, and yeah, so there is also the, all the other tropes are there. And uh, this is not a typical uh, action film. It's a love story. But that is that is how the love story starts. And uh, I'll just one, one last aspect of this and then we we'll move to the next part of the year. So after a few instances of citing him stalking her, the female lead confronts him in a cafe. Uh, the hero says he doesn't understand what the problem is, if he is admiring or loving her from a distance. So so that is the explanation that is kind of given. Uh, and also there's a lot of these songs are also shot in uh, major cities of the world. So there are some sort of Telugu songs that are shot in Europe. So there is one famous uh, Telugu song, it's again called I Wanna Follow, 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 Follow You. And uh, this, the entire song is about the hero kind of harassing uh, the heroine on the streets of London. So there is a lot happening there because they are always talking about the audience, but I always wonder what the people who are witnessing the uh, Shooting, thinking about the entire sequence. So I'll come to the last part of my uh, paper very quickly. Uh, so this is the criticism part. Uh, venturing, I want to enter into what can be done about this. What should a regional cinema do at a representational level through its stories? What do films like Parasite or a number of Iranian films that the global audience have lapped up, what do they have to offer? And I think they offer stories with a first with a, with a progressive social vision, a progressive social vision which is rooted in the regional and at the same time inclusive and has a universal appeal. A lot of Malayalam, Malayalam films have done this uh, brilliantly. Uh, I'll just read this line again. A progressive social vision uh, which is rooted in the regional and at the same time inclusive and has a universal appeal. So I wanted to keep this talk as non-academic as possible but old habits die hard. So i just bring in the concept of cosmopolitanism. And uh, so cosmopolitanism is essentially refers to a social world shaped to cultural modes of mediation where we focus on moments of world openness. So here 
I would take this opportunity to propose the possibility of a Cosmo regional cinematic imaginary which showcases the regional, definitely, but with a cosmopolitan sensibility which I truly believe will open up new audiences who might not be having any cultural affinity uh, but will embrace it purely because of the universal appeal that will naturally emerge from having a progressive social vision. Uh, last few lines. So, owing to the time constraints, I addressed only one aspect of criticism with respect to Telugu cinema. Another aspect is how Telugu cinema has dealt with the question of caste and how it portrays violence and an unabashed hor horrific display of blood and gore on screen. And a lot of these films have received U or US certification, meaning children are watching these films. That is an analysis for another day. I would like to conclude with the following lines. Yesterday I was having a conversation with GP uh, Vijay Kumar ji, and uh, he said something very interesting used two words to describe what we expect regional cinema to do on a global stage, recognition and respect. I think Telugu cinema is on the right track when it comes to the former, but when it comes to the latter, that is respect, there's miles to go and I think uh, while the solutions are very, very complex to suggest, maybe the first practical step is to take this talking Telugu hero of the world streets. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Hidden, sir. पवित्र मार्गदर्शन जिसे कहूँगा कि अपने विचार रखें और इधर जी जो है विगत विदेश वर्षों से अधिक समय से जो है सांस्कृतिक क्षेत्र में बहुत सक्रिय है और और मुझे लगता है कि ये बहुत अच्छी बात है कि इस तरह का एक सांस्कृतिक कर्मी जो सिनेमा को भी समझते हैं वो आज राज्यसभा में है जहाँ पे वो हमारी बात Thank you, Prabhupada Ji. There's nothing I can assure. If I get an opportunity, definitely I'll try to focus on cinema, even my new arena of the upper house. Namaskar, everyone. I'm Prabhupada Margarita from Assam. Uh, thank the I, the very outset, at the very outset, I'd like to thank uh, the organizers, my sincere, the Flame University, uh, for inviting me to speak in front of you. And my Regards to the chair and my fellow speakers and all of you. Only the students from Barnicolo medium can understand how it is, how tough it is to speak in front of this learned people in English language. So I studied in Barnicolo medium, so my English has, is not up to the mark. So ignore my poor English. Anyways, uh, second point: being a filmmaker or a film worker. Yes, as my friend Lama told, that I've been associated with this film for the last 20 to 25 years. If you ask me to take a shot, I can take. If you ask me to write on this uh, scene on the script, I can do that. Then I can direct the background music director, or I, I can direct the colorist. But uh, believe me, till date, uh, although I have produced a number of songs, short films, and the feature film as well, so many singles and at films, but till last week I didn't think about the Im global impact of my any production or any cinema. I, as a simple layman or simple senior worker, I uh, keep working in the field of cinema or art and culture. Sure. But uh, intentionally, I never thought about what may be the impact of my production or our, our production. As a worker, I have been doing working, but the philosophical, the intellectual part of post-production or, 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 or of a product, I have not thought till it. So it will be very tough for, for me to comment on that. Anyways, uh, but by luck or by, I got an opportunity to work as an administrator of a government agency who uh, looks after things in my state of Assam. So for the last, uh, since yesterday I've seen our, many of our speakers are talking about the government rule or government agencies rule to enliven and or to strengthen the regional film industry. I think I should better focus on that point because I'm experienced, I person experience I have been a uh, chairman of a studio, government studio, and as a stakeholder of the government of Assam. Although I have resigned from that post. You know, uh, I worked in a studio, on a studio. This is uh, the first common studio in India, which was established in 1961. And uh, it became operational in 1968. It's called Jyoti Chitravan. And still sustaining, and it's still 
uh, shining. So I have been the chairman of Jyoti Chitra and then practically I came to know the, what's the, uh, what is possible from the government side. Till the moment I became the chairman, I was uh, running after the government for film policy, for the rules and regulation, for the demands as a filmmaker. But when I sat on the chair, I then came to know practically what can be done and what should be done. So, I don't know whether each and every state of our India have got, got a comprehensive film policy. We are talking about regional cinema and its influence. So, before talking to that, we must strengthen our own regional cinema. And for this, along with the other stakeholders, the duty of the government and government agency is very, very important. So, uh, we are, our service film industry started in the year of 1935, one of the oldest film industry. Rukmur Jyoti Prasad Agarwala, he started, he produced, directed the first Assamese movie, Toki, Joy Moti, in 1935. I think it is among the first five Talkies of India. And it is the, this, uh, the first Daad movie in India. Because accidentally, the recorded tracks were erased by the uh, sound uh, technician of Lahore. So, Jyoti Prasad Agarwala could not but dub all the 30, almost uh, major characters, 35 characters, he himself dubbed. So this is, by accidentally, it is the first dub movie in India. Anyways, so we have a history of, a very strong history of uh, 87, 88 year long history in the uh, film industry. So, but till 1990, uh, 2019, we did not have any film policy. So, as a person associated with the film administration of government agency, I must say that each and every state should have a comprehensive film policy. Then we can talk about strengthening or empowering the regional film. Of course, the government agency or a government cannot influence the filmmakers how to make a film how to put more soft power to a film, how to uh, uh, go and make success abroad. But a government and government agencies can uh, create a situation where a film can grow very nicely. So first of all, I feel that film policy must have film policy. I don't know, you, Lama may know, you may know it, whether all the states of us have a comprehensive film policy. And what should be the contents of the film policy? For example, I, I, I had the opportunity to chair the film policy drafting in Assam. So I just want to share some points, especially the filmmakers would love to listen to these uh, points. Because how a state government, a small state of Assam, how they drafted, they enacted the film policy. So you, uh, first point, the subsidy. <coughs> subsidy to the regional cinema. Only, uh, why I'm talking about, uh, what's the relevance of this uh, play policy with this subject, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll tell later. But uh, first, in the policy, I have to uh, say that the subsidy to the regional cinema. Government is some, uh, prior to uh, GST and this play policy, we used to return the entire collection of entertainment tax to the regional cinema. Government of Assam returned all the amusement tax or entertainment tax, what it is. It, is, it was returned to the filmmakers, which was, collecting, which, which was collected during the first year of release. So, Assam government initiated this. But now, post GST, we decided that we would give subsidy to 20 films a year. How much? 25% of the total budget, not exceeding 1 crore. The budget. If your budget is 1 crore, we will give 25 lakhs. If your budget is 50 lakhs, we will give 12.5 lakhs. So this is the ceiling. So to select the script, there is a high level committee uh, represented by people like you and uh, representatives from the government and government agencies. They select the best script, which are to be subsidized or uh, be given the grant credit, whatever you say. Then, okay, your film is being selected, you, are, you have been given, uh, rewarded with a subsidy of 25% of your budget. Then comes the other services, 
are provided by another agency that is government studio, my studio, Jyoti Chitravan. I have resigned from the post. Anyway, how the government studio can help a regional cinema? You see, when uh, area Alexa XT's uh, per day rental was uh, 35 to 40,000 in Bombay, I used to give it to my regional filmmakers at the rate of 18,000, including GST. Like that. And now, just a couple of months, a couple of years ago, three years ago, I, I uh, sent a proposal to the government of India to uh, modernize my studio. Within three weeks, government of India sent some 10 crore for my studio. So I must, I must thank this NDA government. With the, because it's a cultural proposal, some studio is asking for money, but thanks to the NDA government, they sent some 10 crore within three, three weeks, not months. So with that, I procured one, uh, Airy Alexa Mini LF, all of you know filmmakers, Airy Alexa Mini LF with signature brand lens. The present current uh, rental in uh, Bombay or Delhi or Hyderabad, it may be around 40 to 50,000 per day, probably, I'm not sure. But in our government studio, we provide it to the filmmakers, original filmmakers, at the rate of 18,000 only, including lens, including tax. So this is the way the government can help a filmmaker. And for your kind information, if you shoot a film in Assam, uh, the film tourism policy is also there in Assam, you can take that conversation. If you shoot there, you don't bring the camera to Bombay or Tane, you can use it also. And it's not only the camera, camera to area light to 5.1, 7.1 studio. I uh, just, uh, it's, it's on the pipeline, it's uh, going to be installed within a month or two. I have procured, I, I should uh, ignore my eyes and ways, okay? Uh, so we uh, installed one uh, grading uh, studio, and compared to the present current market in the private sectors, we have started giving concession of 50%. Film grading ke liya, studio having charge so we have lakh, five lakh. We give it at the rate of only two lakhs, like that. So government can provide services to the resident filmmakers in such a way. That's why I'm answering, and it will be very encouraging for the filmmakers. I feel the information I share with you because you can take this uh, information to your uh, concerned states, governments, and then okay, you have your uh, your script has been chosen. You are getting uh, 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 the equipment and services in a concessional price, then you have to release the film. I don't know what happens in Maharashtra or Tamil Nadu, Kerala or other parts of India, but there in Assam, we face a regular problem the release timing and date. When Bahubali comes, Gangubai comes, then my original film, that probably Marathi filmmakers may have faced such problem. But my film policy, our film policy, our film policy has a uh, rule there. Local film producer must get, it's compulsory, must get one prime time show as children by the producer. Must. Apparently, if this uh, second week you are uh, going to take, additional uh, uh, shows if you want to take, then definitely uh, the, 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 the uh, share, uh, 10% of the total occupancy capacity you have to give as a guarantee money. Suppose the capacity of that particular uh, particular uh, hall is suppose 1 lakh rupees, then you have to give 10% of that. This is guarantee money. So, so now the second question will be that uh, exhibitors or cinema hall owners are also our stakeholders. They should also not be disturbed. So that is why to safeguard their uh, business interest, there are some other uh, points also there. So that all the filmmakers and film producers cannot suppress their business, there are some other options are also there. And then, uh, related to this Senate theaters, I'm uh, mentioning one point again. So in Assam and in Northeast also, the number of cinema halls are very less. We had only 100 centers, now at present in Brahmaputra Valley, where generally there are some films, original films run. Uh, there we have only 60 to 65 centers. So government initiated one another program to give grants in aid to entrepreneurs who want to uh, establish a cine theater up to 65 lakhs without any return. Up our project go, no business with you. Just 
you have to respect regional cinema, you have to respect Indian cinema. And even some old host, uh, for to uh, maintain, to renovate, to modernize old cinema theaters also, we have some plans. So it's grand cinema, which we was made in it. Just you take away the money to strengthen our film industry. This is the exhibitors part. This is the exhibitors part. Okay, then your film theater is ready, your show is ready, you have taken the uh, cooperation in terms of services from the uh, studios. Now, your cinema is being screened. Thirdly, what if, you, if your uh, cinema uh, doesn't do a good business but you have got some award, national award, state award, or your film is being uh, selected in a leading, in leading uh, festivals, You'd like to know it, you'd like it. Any film from Assam as official entry to represent India in Oscar will receive an amount of rupees 2 crore. So, you know, suppose one film is being selected for Oscar. Uh, yesterday it was discussed that if it is selected to Oscar, we have to exhibit it to the, the juries. For a juries, it's a very costly affair. You have to hire a five-star kind of uh, area or some uh, you know, theaters. You, you have to invite the uh, uh, juries and to show them the movie. So it's a costly effect. That's why government of Assam uh, decided to give rupees two crore to the production so that they can they can do this publicity and all the things considered to be a reward or considered to be a grand city. So this is and uh, if. Uh, if the movie gets uh, official award, not it, official award, not in the, 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 the events organized in the sidelines of uh, international big uh, events like uh, film festivals, if it, is, if it receives an official award uh, in reputed film festivals like Cannes, Toronto, Berlin, Busan, Venice, uh, Tokyo, Locarno, Cairo, etc., etc., then a cash award of rupees 20 lakhs will be given to the particular cinema. This is another incentives. And a cash over to national award winner or uh, winning films and individuals. Joe Bilte, suppose two lakhs, uh, how much? Is, uh, two lakhs or something like that. Mm -hmm. So if you come back with the trophy, uh, some government will facilitate to it with a double of that award money, reward money. Dollar mill, and if you uh, that films uh, winning Shwarna Kamal and Rajat Kamal will get a guaranteed subsidy of uh, 50 lakhs and 30 lakhs respectively. So again 50 lakhs. If, you, if a film wins 50 lakhs then again you will be awarded with 50 lakhs. And that 50 lakhs is a very interesting thing, thing is that he is the producer and the director. Next production we will not may, we may, we may not work together. So it will be shared 50-50. The producer will get 25 lakhs and the director will get 25 lakhs and per is 30 lakhs. And uh, so uh, this way, and so many uh, points are there, I don't think that it's the right forum to discuss or enter the claim policy. But uh, I mention this because to strengthen, to empower a result cinema, the government agencies and government can play a vital role. I think whatever I mentioned from my film policy, uh, you have come to know that such a way government can encourage the regional film industry. So, so many points are to be discussed, but uh, Vijayji and uh, Shantulji and Shashiji have mentioned all the things related to the uh, global impact and uh, global uh, this influence of regional cinema. So, I think I should conclude. And, uh, and the Lama said perfectly that what is regional cinema? That, uh, that, that is a conflict in me also, that like uh, many of you, yesterday also many speakers told that uh, what is Bollywood, it's a copy of Bollywood. Like this regional cinema, whenever a film crosses the boundary of India, each and every film becomes uh, an Indian cinema. We know Telugu, Bahubali is still Telugu movie or Pan India movie, another term I have heard. Uh, this is in India, but whenever it crosses the boundary, it's an uh, Indian cinema. Patar Pasal is not a Bengal cinema, village roster. It's not a, a, a Sanjay cinema, it's an Indian cinema. And uh, I don't think, uh, I think, I, I uh, generally feel that these are Indian cinemas with different languages. So, 
Thanks once again to ICC here, Srijut Vinay uh, Dada and the uh, team of uh, Flame University and all of you for listening to me. And uh, so thank you. I think uh, I should conclude here because I won't allow Kashi uh, Lama to give you sleep. I won't allow him. And thanks once again to everybody. Jai Maharashtra, Jai Aham, Bande Matram. बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद पवित्र जी आपकी बातें सुनते मुझे लग रहा है कि अगली फिल्म आसाम में बनानी पड़ेगी क्योंकि पड़ोस में नागालैंड में जाके मैंने फिल्म बनाई है पहली नागामिस भाषा की फिल्म है वो और मुझे लगता है अगली फिल्म आसाम में ही करनी पड़ेगी आप में से अगर किसी का कुछ प्रश्न है तो आप पूछ सकते हैं जी सर मॉर्निंग particularly in relation to the production or the producers. Uh, we have a couple of production houses here. And uh, overall, again, I'm talking from the Marathi uh, films that uh, are done in Maharashtra. What I feel is uh, many of the producers are actually not uh, understanding which films to make, to make the regional films stronger, as rightly put up by Pavitra sir that we have to make your regional films very strong. But for that, you need to understand what kind of films to make. Because as an actor also, I have, I have received at least five such scripts which I have rejected on the face of the producers. Now the producers are not putting more than 1.5 CR, which is, a, which is a reasonably small amount for a Marathi film, Marathi commercial film. But uh, what I want to know from you, sir, is can there be a forum or such kind of a seminar for producers and make them understand that this is the particular way of thinking that you should be, you know, this, this should be your thought process if you want to make a film, if you want to make a good film, which will be a good film in its own sense, which will improve the quality of the regional cinema and vis-a-vis -vis, it would be doing good on the global platform as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. मुझे गोपाल कृष्ण गोखले जी ने जब गांधी जी भारत में आए थे उनको कहा कि आप भारत को देखिए जरा भारत में अगर आप इसको स्वतंत्रता आंदोलन में आज राजनीतिक गतिविधि में जा रहे तो भारत को थोड़ा देखिए समझिए मुझे लगता है कि ये जो रीजनल सिनेमा है वो आज हमारे सिनेमा के माध्यम से हमारे पास वो टेक्निक है कि हम अगर आप जो लोग पूरे भारत में घूमना जिनके लिए संभव नहीं है कम से कम पूरे भारत की सिनेमा को देखने का प्रयास करें मुझे लगता है इससे बहुत सारे जो बहुत सारे कई बार जो विवाद भी आते हैं हमने अभी हाल में देखा कि भाषा को लेकर विवाद आ गया ये विवाद नहीं रहेगा मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि अगर हम उस सिनेमा को देखने का प्रयास करें और एक मेरा और अनुभव है मैं जैसे मैं बताऊं कि जैसे मैंने वो नागालैंड में जगह फिल्म बनाई थी तो हमारे एक कार्यक्रम था राम भाव माल की प्रबुद्धनी में विनय सर उस समय डायरेक्टर जनरल थे उसका हमने हमसे बड़े निवेदन करके उसका लिया परमिशन लिया था नॉर्थ ईस्ट के बहुत सारे लोग आए थे उसमें कलाकार पूरे और उसमें चर्चा हुई उन्होंने एक बड़ा प्रश्न था हमारे सामने मैं हिंदी सिनेमा में काम करता हूँ लेकिन वहां पे एक प्रश्न था कि आप जो है हिंदी सिनेमा वाले या बॉलीवुड जिसको समझते आप लोग नॉर्थ ईस्ट की तरफ देखते क्यों नहीं आप कभी क्यों नहीं आते वहां पर आप हमारी कहानी क्यों नहीं बताते तो मुझे पहली बार लगा कि यार मुझे ना वहां जाकर फिल्म बनानी चाहिए तो फिर मैंने पता किया कि कहाँ का बना सकते हैं मुझे पता चला नागालैंड में जो है एक बच्ची है जिसको 2015 में चिल्ड्रन ब्रेवरी अवार्ड मिला था मोन बेनी यूजूम सबसे छोटी बच्ची थी उसने अपनी नानी को नदी में डूबने से बचाया था और सात किलोमीटर जंगल क्रॉस करके हेल्प लेके आई थी तो हमने उसका बायोपिक राइट्स लिया जब हमने वहां बनाया फिल्म उसका एक अनुभव मैं जैसा आपको तो शेयर करना चाहूंगा कि जब यहाँ काम करते हुए हम जो हम कल लेंस की बात कर रहे थे वेस्टर्न लेंस वेस्टर्न लेंस तो हमें अलग तरह से देखता है उनको तो हम हर इंडियन शायद डार्क कॉम्प्लेक्शन होता है वो भूल जाते हैं कि अलग अलग चेहरे के भी लोग होते हैं यहाँ पे या उस रंग नहीं दिखता है लेकिन जब हम यहाँ से जाके उस 
ओरिजिनल चीजों को देखते हैं ये बहुत ही अलग पर्सपेक्टिव होती है और मुझे लगता है वो सिनेमा के लिए रीजनल सिनेमा मुझे लगता है अगर जीपी पी कुमार सर जो है अगर हिंदी के सिनेमा बनाए जैसे प्रिय दर्शन सर वो जो है हमने उस तरह का सिनेमा देखा नहीं था प्रिय दर्शन सर के जब अपने सिनेमा में स्कूल में था उनकी फिल्म थी मुस्कुराहट और गर्दिश हम आमतौर पर हिंदी सिनेमा में उस तरह का हमने लुक नहीं देखा था वो दक्षिण का एक फील्ड से एक हिंदी सिनेमा को उन्होंने दिखाया उसका एक प्रभाव पड़ा मुझे लगता है आने वाले समय में भी अगर हम इस तरह हम बहुत फिल्म मेकर्स है राइटर्स है उस तरह से अगर हम प्रयास करें तो उसका भी एक बहुत एक डिफरेंट एक पर्सपेक्टिव दिखेगा डिफरेंट कलर दिखेगा और किसी का कुछ प्रश्न है क्योंकि किसी का प्रश्न नहीं था तो मैंने अपने बात को कहा such insurance covering the financial risk of a film i believe in europe and us there is some insurance working but i have higher premium they insure the, the recovery to the cost factor of the film which you have to pay an insurance but in india it's not there at the moment and secondly this ott platform business if it works it gives i feel my experience this adds on as another filter for your project whether they will accept it or not they have a way of looking with their experience their surveys they have more data than you and me have as individual producers in the industry up to date how many people in the world are seeing it how many you know uh, countries it has been repeatedly so those data help them to evaluate a project slightly better than us because we are limited to how many films i have done 30 films okay but they have done 300 films or they are doing films back to back in various languages they know the data of those films so if you don't qualify or if you don't get the safety my advice is you should you shouldn't do that movies that is the mainstream films but then there is another section of films which are creative and you know which can take the film to national international level awards exposure one thing is sure the world market is not looking for your star studded big budget mega movies no the films which are fared well indian films in the last 2 years if you take are all comparatively small films very small films in malayalam at least i can say the home at home film which is made in 2 and a half crores very very small film with no major artist what penetration it is made so similarly if you take all these big budget films if you take from radhe to that bomb to such big films of india has not fared anywhere in the ott platform worldwide market so there is content value making value well appreciated by the international audience because they are also expecting a indian film different from avada they are not going to see a, a indian film in comparison with avada they know indian there is why again i repeatedly said to keep retain an identity in due course of time we have to have indian based subjects because once the indian film gets a better exposure which is getting any which way now and indian film means people will expect that identity why should we copy others and then we become a 
copying party or a second hand maker, we can have our originals. We have plenty of subjects. We have to go into it. And that uniqueness will give India, Indian films, a better position in the world market. This is my view. Ajayji, I want to add, because in Marathi, these efforts were made to call all the producers. I think Abhinam, you must be knowing about it. I was specifically referring to uh, debutant producers who want to become producers, who are fresh into the business. First of all, look at this particular field as a business and then trying to become a producer and then trying to educate them that, okay, if you want to become a produ producer, this would be the thought process that you have to apply to make a good film so that they don't make bad films and though it is 1.5 CR, still it goes down the drain. Yeah. Sir, uh, sir uh, have a problem that uh, we have several institutes which teach us the direction, acting, but nobody teaches production, which is available abroad. Okay. And uh, things, would, <laughs> anybody <laughs> can be a producer. You know, anybody can walk in and yeah. claim to be a producer. And see, there is uh, one thing which I also learned out of experience, but I try to impart, but it doesn't work that easy because every aspiring producer has certain ideas in mind. It can be personal. It can be glamour he wants, it can be recognition he wants, it may be anything. But so he has not gone in depth into why I am doing this film. See, the first thing a producer has to answer to himself is why I am venturing into this project. Am I going to make money out of this project? If you are smart, tie up with an OTT platform, ensure your money safety, do the film. You are smart. Now, you don't listen to elders giving any piece of advice, you will be driven by your, you know, unstoppable passion driven. So there is no reason driving him, it is passion driving him, so he's mad. So such people, you know, in industry we are facing Homer, but we can't do anything about them. And in Malayalam industry we had once a producer association advisory committee, so any film you want to start, you have to register first, and this committee has to screen and brief them, what exactly he was saying. In that briefing, believe me, the experience of people has been very bad. The fellow coming is influenced by some external forces and all these people. They come you and sit him on the table. So he'll ask, I want to do, why are you stopping me from doing? That is the attitude he takes. So then he will go out and say, these people are envious. They don't want other producers to come up. They don't want new talent to come up. They have their own reason. And they burn their fingers. Or halfway they do the film and go. So this is a very... Uh, as you said, if there could be any body where you could impart uh, knowledge into them about the prediction. Now, first of all, they don't know anything about the prediction management. They can't evaluate a script. They can't budget a film. They can't chart a film shooting. I think they just depend on somebody's motivation or uh, manipulation. They're all victims, actually. So this is a sad state of our. But OTT business related, I'm telling you. Where a total discipline has been received earlier, it was institutionalized. Production houses were institutions. They had control. They had a team. They had, you know, the technicians and everything was accountable. Today, individuals from X, Y, Z come and start production. They have no control, no knowledge. So the artists, technicians do what they like. End of the film is a masala. It may work, it may not work. With this advent of OTT platforms, where it is not that way. They need a script. They need a budget. They go to the extent of even locations, equipment, everything. So that system, if continues, which I wish, then the discipline is going to be enforced. Because it is an indisciplined industry, let us enforce discipline and get the work done. Let's hope. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, someone raised the hand. Yes, ma'am. My question was, when we look at global audiences, we're looking at um, the citizens of that country and the diaspora. Does India have data to understand which regional films, are, which genres are popular where, what are the regional languages that are popular in which country, what is the diaspora's need? As far as I know, the Indian diaspora abroad is a mirror reflection of what India audiences. Exactly the same. Their taste, their requirements, habits are there. In which genre? In films, you know, it is a little difficult to identify the genre because films in any genre, if it is interesting, is interesting. 
it can be romantic, it can be vengeance, it can be social, it can be humor fact, anything. But film is something like, I compare always, supposing you have the best of bindi you bought or best of mutton you bought, but the masala process, the cooking process has gone wrong, eventually you don't want it, you don't like it. So, our big a film is made with our big a star, today's scenario, if the making process, how it is treated, how interestingly it is treated, and how it is made, all this put together is not appealing because the people internationally or within India, they are now seeing films from the rest of the whole world, which was not there 20 years or 15 years back. Today they see all countries, award-winning films, commercial films, so comparison is instant. Are the, our film equal to that? That's why I repeated, he said, Indian content, Indian, you know, origin, those things will make better business. And we definitely have to focus non-Indian seeing the movies to a better, which will automatically happen. That is what we should focus on. I might uh, add to that question. I'm here on your right. That's right. Um, having traveled around the world multiple times, I do believe that our diaspora is, in a manner of speaking, more Indian than we Indians. And they appreciate the more the Indianness in the theme, the more they will flock to it. Uh, my question is to you, uh, Vijay Kumarji. First of all, thank you for a very lucid presentation. Uh, number one, you said that uh, Bengali OTT uh, platforms are not working. I thought Hoi Choi was doing extremely well. And um, number two, you said that uh, regional films should be brought inside homes rather than people going to theatres. Now, what might be the mechanism? I will answer both the things. First I said, I do know Hoichi platform is there exclusively Bengali, but I said, today the exposure in Netflix, Amazon, Hotstar, or Z, Zoni, is much, much bigger. This Hoichi platform reach is zero if you ask me in Kerala because people are not subscribing because they only see those particular films, you know. So the it's all subscription-based channels. Why I said is, after my period being jury, I went and when I was talking to my friends in the film industry in Kerala to even remake or to see, to appreciate some of these Bengali films, we tried to see where to see the movie. None of these platforms are carrying the Bengali film. Then I asked them. In fact, uh, one subject we wanted to remake the parcel film, Ridhuparna Sense. Then we talked to them. Well, they say the these leading platforms are not buying their Bengali films, although they are good films, because they don't have that uh, over their data shows that there are not many Bengalis around the world to see these things, and subscriptions numbers will be very less. So we are unable to see those movies. Same thing with, uh, you know, these uh, Azamis and the Bodai, some beautiful films. I want to tell my friends, please see it, how they have made it this prize. But we have to see it. This is the problem. So the Bengali films are not that they are not having OTT, but Hoichi is a limited platform only within the Bengali circle. Nowhere else. You ask anybody. Second Ajay question. Ah. Uh, one question about the distribution that you were talking. Uh, we were earlier having picture halls which were in, uh, owned individually. <coughs> Somebody may be having two, three, four picture halls in a city like Delhi, but it was uh, one single picture hall owned by one person. But now we are having uh, like PVR which are having a few thousand uh, screens. It's not picture hall, it's a screens. Uh, but then OTT comes. So these two are uh, different things. Does the OTT platform not have a, uh, uh, does the distributor like PVR not have a problem with OTT platform? Because then people will not be going to uh, uh, PVR. And will it not uh, damage uh, the film industry ultimately in the end? I'll answer. My own experience is there. When we had a Malayalam film, His Sign Azapala, which is a super duper hit doing business in theaters, I released it in Chennai. That's a fair theater, which is not there, but there is a small theater, good theater, one of the best. 
The problem is that time the regional film was 90% confined to the regional viewers of that city only. So the Malayalis has to come and see the movie in Safiya theatre if I have to stay. Weekdays you find only 10% occupancy. Saturday, Sunday, yes, we do have because the working people coming. The theatre fellow wants me to pay fix hire for the whole week. Can you imagine a film of super hit in Malayalam going full houses? I paid from my pocket to the theatre and took the print back. <laughs> that was the scenario that. <laughs> now, same thing in multiplex across India also. The regional films, not with Malayalam, it can have with Tamil, even a Marathi film if you put it in Chennai or in Kerala, the same thing. Because how many people will be there to see even in a multiplex? They have 150 seats, 200 seats like that going on. It is very difficult to get people on a weekday. They may give you one day's plate here, there and everything and it doesn't work. So OTT, you can't prevent, you know, th there is a huge, I mean, protest from the exhibitors that OTT is going to kill us, this and all, but I, be, I feel it will coexist. Because when video came first, satellite came, the same problem was there, but both were doing very well. Theatre mein jo picture acha gaya, wo OTT mein aur acha ja rahe. So this is a changing scenario. But the OTT's advantage is unstoppable because you are, today, youngsters are our potential clients. Earlier when we make films, you know, 25 years back, our film discussion is first family ko pakad na family viewership hona chahiye. But today, it has changed youth hona chahiye. Youngsters should come because first few days, no family, nothing. If youngsters are not Coming into the theater in large numbers, the film is out. Next day there is no show. This is the scenario. So OTT can help us because the youngsters will see film at their convenient time. They want to see mostly in app. Actually the, the survey shows theatrical viewership decline, satellite viewership declining, OTT plot, you know, sorry, this is app based, which is in phone or anything, it is fast increasing. So changing scenario, we have to depend on OTT. निवेदन है जो भी प्रश्न पूछे ना क्योंकि हमारा एक आगे में हम लोग कुछ करेंगे की फिल्म बिजनेस को लेकर भी सेशन कर सकते हैं इन फ्यूचर बट आज जो है जो हमारा सब्जेक्ट है आज का ग्लोबल इन्फ्लुएंस जो है सॉफ्ट पावर से रिलेटेड उससे रिलेटेड अगर आप क्वेश्चंस पूछेंगे तो ज्यादा अच्छा है जी पूछिए कल्पेश गोपाल महाराष्ट्र टाइम्स संतोष सर ना मजा प्रश्न है अभिराम अजय दादा पे है इकनी उत्तर जॉइन कराव जस मगे सर आसाम फिल्म पॉलिसी संगित ती मरा सीनेमाला अधिक प्रोत्साहन देने अपने कें का काम सुरू है अपने जे नैशनल अवॉर्ड विनिंग फिल्म है तो सुधा रिलीज कर खूब अवगढ़ हो तर खरच आपण केंद्र सरकारला किंवा राज्य सरकारची मदत घेऊन अशा प्रकारची पॉलिसी आणू शकतो का महाराष्ट्रामध्ये महाराष्ट्र गव्हर्नमेंट हॅज इम्प्लिमेंटेड सच पॉलिसी फ्रॉम द इन्सेप्शन राईट आता प्रॉब्लेम असा आहे की आपण चांगला सिनेमा बनवला पाहिजे मराठी सिनेमांचा जो प्रॉब्लेम आहे की आपल्याकडे पाच टक्के सिनेमे चांगले असतात तर मुळात म्हणजे जसं गव्हर्नमेंट आपल्याला सपोर्ट देत आहे definitely government is supporting but as he also said and all panelists said that it is a uh, responsibility of the makers to make good films now if you will calculate how many good films are made the tachat aplya kade khup problem hai aplya kade marathi film making madhe sadhi khup problem hai jasa ajay sir ani vichar lok about producer producers cha adhi khup apan prashikshan ghetla pahije ki kutla cinema banvaycha hai ani ka banvaycha hai karan sairat ala tacha nantar gairat bairat अशा टाईप चे सिनेमे आले आणि आम्हाला असेच सिनेमे बनवायचे आहेत अशा प्रकारचं एक एक मानसिकता असते सो इनिशियली तुम्ही जो प्रश्न विचारला की गव्हर्नमेंटने काय करायचं तर गव्हर्नमेंट खूप काय करत आहे असं मला आत्ता तरी दिसतंय बिकॉज नॅशनल अवॉर्ड आहेत नॅशनल अवॉर्ड जेव्हा मिळतात तेव्हा त्याला सबसिडी आहे अनुदान आहेच आणि ते पहिल्यापासून आहे त्याचे फॉर्म्स बदललेत दे हॅव चेंज द फॉर्म्स आहेत अँड द नॉर्म्स ऑल्सो बट स्टील सबसिडी इज देअर and whenever the national award is uh, won by the any marathi film i think state awards and state government also give some uh, uh, extra of this thing 
even when uh, shwas received the oscar uh, was not received it was nominated for the oscar that time government of maharashtra has uh, provided them the financial support as he mentioned that in okay. assam also it was done uh, so same uh, this thing uh, same aid as given to the uh, filmmakers but aplya kade problem kay na ki apan sagle manto ki prime time milala pahije फिल्म्स नाही केलं पाहिजे पण आपल्याकडे चांगल्या फिल्म असतील तरच जातील ना आज कोल्हापूरमध्ये पुष्पाला जास्त लोक जातात आणि मराठी फिल्म जात नाहीत आपण याचा सिरियसली विचार केला पाहिजे दॅट वाय ऑडियन्स इज गोईंग टू द साऊथ फिल्म रादर दॅन मराठी फिल्म सो इट इज अवर रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑल्सो मला असं नाही वाटत की सगळी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी गव्हर्नमेंटच्या डोक्यावर टाकावी आपण आपल्या कंटेंट बद्दल जरा विचार केला पाहिजे असं मला वाटतं बेसिकली आई एम फ्रॉम एफ टी आई है और पिछले बीस सालों से फिल्म एजुकेशन में हूँ और एक इम्पोर्टेंट ऑब्जर्वेशन आई टेलिंग यू की रिसेंटली आई वॉज सबमिटेड वन रिसर्च पेपर ऑन फिल्म रिव्यू तो मैंने फिल्म रिव्यू लिखा था ताबारान कथे गिरीश कासरवाले की एक एक्सलेंट फिल्म थी और हमारे प्रोफेसर ने बताया कि ये कौन सी फिल्म है तो इट्स अ वेरी सीरियस क्वेश्चन कि हमारे अगर प्राध्यापक को पता नहीं है कि एक क्लासिकल फिल्म है तो मुझे विनय जी आपसे एक रिक्वेस्ट है कि आई अगर इतना बड़ा काम कर रहा है तो इंडियन फिल्म स्टडीज के ऊपर अगर कोई डिपार्टमेंट्स या कोई एक्टिविटी हर यूनिवर्सिटीज में होती है तो हमारे स्टूडेंट को प्रोफेसर को पता चले कि इंडियन फिल्म इंडस्ट्री क्या है और ये अलग अलग फिल्म कल्चर क्या है बस धन्यवाद थैंक यू और फॉर एक्शन सजेशन फॉर एक्शन थैंक यू थैंक यू सर आपके जो भी रूपमा जी आपको तो हमें सुनना है द्रौपदी का तो हम लोग नहीं बोल सकते अच्छा जो राज्य थिएटर जला देते हैं और वहां पे मल्टीप्लेक्सेस बना देते हैं उस राज्य के लिए केंद्र क्या करेंगे कैन आई गेट ट्वेंटी सेकेंड जी 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 आप आप आपके जो भी प्रश्न है और सजेशंस है आप हमें मेल कीजिए प्लीज है ना और अगला भी सेशन है उसमें भी आप वो क्वेश्चन यू कैन आस्क है ना मुझे लगता है अब हमारे चेयर इसको कंट्रोल करें जी नमस्कार आई पे माई सिंस इंस्टीट्यूट टू दिस अगस्त कैटरिंग एंड आईसीसीआर एंड प्राइम यूनिवर्सिटी the brain behind the celebration of futurist dream close to our reality i feel honored and humble to be here and this is my second meeting in this auditorium first i came here with my film it was screen in this screen i stood in the same podium and i spoke for 5 minutes i had only 30 audience here and 20 of them were my guests we used the opportunity to listen the thoughts and wisdom and experience of four prominent speakers and practitioners in cinema i sincerely believe that the lectures and conversation elevated our perception of cinema in a global context vijay kumar ji he is very experienced in production and he has nine national awards he said one thing the otp is coming in the big way and we can stop that but i personally feel that in a otp platform if i used to see in my laptop or tv screen it cannot give a complete feeling of watching a movie that we watch to see in a theater hall and i think otp has reduced the viewing pleasure and the purpose of beauty of film we have to think in the future what we can do next because the purpose and beauty of film is it matters if i see a bahubali in my 14 inch screen laptop it will not give the effect and i cannot pay respect to the maker bahubali the rajamouli i can 
I can feel his dream, I can feel his passion. This is the main problem of OTT platform. And part of the technology is growing up and they will find something new. Then whether we can watch film at our home in the big screen, some low budget things will come. Santos Patare is in long lecture, he has mentioned so many things, but he pointed out about one problem, the great Indian kitchen. I have forwarded my review to him, but I want to ask him, this is a feeling, such type of film, whether we can show it in the world or not. The great, my great kitchen of India, this is not a kitchen of India, this is a kitchen of only some Kerala people, some uneducated, some narrow-minded people's kitchen. That cannot be kitchen of India. I don't believe. The film is well made, no doubt. But must be a reason to make this film. And I can understand what reason he might have. I know the trends in Kerala. But is it an Indian film? Does such film should project in the outside the world? You go to any tribal country, see their kitchen, you will feel the difference. Kerala is not India. So Sikranji in his scholarly lecture, he gave so many good things and I simply like to add two more things. He said about courtship, I can remember two scenes, one scene from the one film RX-100. There's a courtship scene that's very different. It broke the norms. And one beautiful uh, gold ship was presented through a beautiful song in the <coughs> Mahabuba, I think, famous Mahabuba. I love Telugu films, despite of its land, but they always they try to do new things. That the land is sometimes irritating for us, for me, because I can see it more than two hours continuously not even my school and college days. And Pobitra Margarita, he is the architect of New Generation Assamese film. He did so many good things. And I appreciate his own, I appreciate his whole work he did, done for film. I noticed one thing, he, while he took the size of Jyoti Chitraban, there's a film studio. All studios are almost same to look at. The gate is always same. It's like a go down. He made a beautiful gate on that studio in front of the main door. He tried to convert it into a temple look. Tried to keep it like a temple. I really, that touched my heart. And Pavitra, he was in Assam. He did for Assamese film. And now he's a national level. And I think it is his time to do in national level. His idea should be implemented. As a well wisher of Pavitra and film, I'll expect that. Now I don't like to talk so much, so I have written some lines. I'll read it out only. We primarily confine the phrase regional cinema to the Indian context. In a broader sense, regional cinema means films made in regional languages. For most of the overseas audience, Indian cinema is divided into three basic categories, Bollywood cinema, cinema of south, and film festival cinema. Both Bollywood cinema and south Indian language are popular in overseas. Film festival films are always regarded as a different genre, and audience of such films are always limited. To speak about global influence, we may start with the word influence. Influence is an abstract idea with visible effect. The meaning of the word influence is the capacity to influence the character development or behavior of someone. The question is how the Indian film will attain that level of capacity to be a powerful player in a global field of cinema. To be very brief, Indian films will need a strong identity. 
a fragmented identity or an identity divided into various quarters with some sub-identity will not strengthen the identity of Indian flame. My comment may displease some of our fraternity, yet I say Indian film is yet to create a respectable identity globally. Foreign films inspired Dada Sahib Falke as a learned craft of cinema in Europe and made his film with Indian content and Indian sensibility. India has a strong art tradition. India is a country of artists and art practitioners in both visual and performing arts. Indian films identity should have been shaped with the aesthetics of traditional art forms amalgamated with the technology based equipments. Do because I mean a Bimal Rai film was released in 1953 and it followed all the Indian tradition of performing arts. From the angle of the content and cinematic narrative, it was a complete Indian film. This is a, on, an example only. The filmmakers of that time mostly followed the traditional Indian art aesthetics. In 1955, a Bangla film was released. It was based on a Bangla epic novel, Potter Pasali, made by Shetrijitra Mastrio, and created a sensation in Europe and then created history in India. Shetrijitra said that the new realism of in Italian films inspired him. Potter's Pasali was the first significant film that followed a narrative pattern of a foreign origin. The content of Potter Pasali is no doubt Indian. The way he told, the idea he took, it was a foreign origin. After that, it became a habit or nature of some intellectual exercise for a group of filmmakers. Despite being inspired by their tradition of arts, many filmmakers started following Western filmmaking theories and started expecting recognition from Europe and other overseas countries. But the West praised only few Indian films, not for filmmaking style, but for the content. We know what type of content is appreciated in the West. Talking about realism, it is not a new thing in India. You, we should have not bring the concept of reality from Italy. You need not have to do that. We can quickly speak about time, about the more than 2,000 years old Sanskrit play with Shekotikam, which narrated the life and crisis of subalterns. India is a country of dance and songs, but a significant group of our filmmakers discarded both elements to build a new narrative of Indian film. Unfortunately, most of the films made in the tune of European films could not find a place or recognized in the West. My belief is that no genuine love of arts enjoy copy work. A poor copy or to be modest, an inspired person of Godard, Truffaut, Bergman will not receive any love or respect in those countries where those masters have lived and worked. To create a, to create a global impact, Indian film desperately needs an identity. In the book of Book Two Voices, modern day philosopher P.C. Satrazi said, and here is the quote with a minor change. Territory is an identity is an status, and status generates power. The original quote being, territory is an status, status generates sex appeal. Indian film cannot reach the share of power without a strong identity. Our Indian once in a film stands with an unique identity, it will find a place in a global market. 
the market is nothing but a war field. One has to fight to find a place, and then another battle starts immediately for survival. The first question is, where to stand in this crowded market and get noticed? Again, I would like to remember all rise and check crowd from the book positioning. Two places are safe in the market. First, high quality plus low price, and second, high quality with high price. In both cases, quality is the predominating factor. India has already created an example of such products. Big budget films like Bahubali, or low budget films like Piravi from Kerala, or Ishanu from East Manipur. Those are best examples. And one latest example is Village Rockstar. It was made only with a 15 Canon camera and a moderate budget, not more than 5 lakhs. It traveled all over the world. And it has inspired a generation that in space, I don't know about the others in Assam. It inspired a generation to start to make film in the lowest possible budget, and almost in zero budget. To sustain the market, one can follow Sanit Kaj mantra, Sam Dam Dondo Hate. And I think in this context, only Sam and Dam will be enough. In the book, Marketing Warfare, I am a great lover of Buddha, it has all rise in the crowd. They had rightly said that he wins in a battle who can use the latest equipment. This comment is valid and applicable in the war of power as well. At the event of digital revolution, a platform like Film Freeway appeared and changed the grammar of film festival entries. The same, the same, the same him in the distribution with UFO and other players. Another game changer came in the name of OTT platforms like Amazon, Netflix, and so on. Amazon, Netflix not only exhibit films but also produces. They produce films according to their requirement and now they have created a new narrative for films. Being a soft, soft power is not only a market oriented game but it is a philosophy, an ideology, and it is an identity of a country. In the end, we are selling a product, yet we are also exposing our country's pride and honor to the world. The creator who loves his own country has that shaviman, and he will think about the country's image and pride. Others are proposal makers or product sellers. If you send it to filmmakers, and country lovers feel that the government should not promote such films abroad or inside the country which shows an underdeveloped India with plenty of tribals living in remote areas and living amidst frustration, hunger and poverty. India has so many stories to tell. It is time for the government to promote films that tell a story of tradition, values, culture and development branded with humanity and speak in the language of film. With these words, I would like to conclude my words expressing my gratitude to you all for listening to my speech. I'm grateful to Prem University and ICCR providing me such a platform to express my views and to share this session. And also they gave me one opportunity to me I have a regular habit of listening music, especially I listen to report and I love to listen to political thoughts. Every day before I sleep, I listen at least 30 minutes of report and 10 minutes of political lecture. And my favorite speaker is Vinay Shaushri He is not here. He is, I believe, he is the philosopher of politics. And this is has given me a chance to meet him personally. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Pandutaji. And thank you, speakers. Now, we'll see the museum. Sir, um, can I make a few, uh, one announcement at the end? So, uh, what we're doing is, uh, there'll be a museum tour, like Akaji mentioned. Um, and uh, 
Film Division has been very kind to give us a few uh, volunteers who, who will be able to guide us through this museum. This is a, a very, very beautiful museum, just three years old, so I haven't really been exposed to many people. I just want to raise up hand if, so that, uh, because they can't do the museum with a large crowd, so they will divide you into two, three groups. Uh, so if we can just sort of a quick raise of hand, if how many of you what would like to see the museum? So I'll then accordingly get them to what? Okay, almost everyone. So that's good. Um, we will have one hour, um, I would say. Um, and uh, then we will have another hour for lunch. So overall, so we meet here sharp at 2.30. We start our session at 2.30. The other thing is that uh, uh, the Minister of Information Broadcasting, uh, Anurag Thakurji, unfortunately at the last minute had to cancel his plan to come here and he expresses deep apology. Yeah, we're trying to see if we can get a, a video recording of his speech. Uh, but in, in that case, what we're planning to do is that the next session, because I know many of you have to leave early tonight for your flights, so we thought we might as well then advance the session. Uh, or we, in India, we got to pre -pone the session a little bit. Um, so, the last, so the next session after lunch, we'll also have the valedictory along with. And we will try to, uh, we'll aim, and because one of the speakers, uh, Viren Chitravji, could not join us due to health reasons, so it'll be a shorter one with uh, three uh, chair and two speakers. Um, and so the valid the valedictory session can be, uh, can be kind of, so both valedictory and the fifth session, they both will happen together. We'll, we plan to end by 4.30, 4.45, and then we'll break for tea only at that time, and we will then disperse. I just wanted to uh, give a sense of the uh, how the ne remaining day is looking like. Uh, uh, so, uh, of course, so Prasadji is here. Thanks, Prasadji. Um, so almost everyone will be, so Prasadji is, of course, here at Film Division, very kindly agreed to give you the tour. Uh, we'll probably need uh, two more people because almost everyone would like to see the museum. And I think uh, this will be a big group for you alone to handle. So, in common break. How many people? How many people? So, around 30. 15 people. Sir, how many people need to be in one group? Sir, 20 in one group will be good. So, after they go back, only next time go, right? Sorry? No, 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 no. parallel. They all, it all happen parallelly. So, uh, so we can start with the. Uh, uh, Ji. Uh, so there is a so there is a Satyajit Ray film festival going on, and uh, film division of course uh, encourages you to participate there also. So initially, all of you will follow Prasadji to the Satyajit Ray gallery, and from there uh, the dispersion can happen between two or three groups. So Prasadji will be able to coordinate. Oh, Sorry, Akash. Uh, 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 oh yeah, of course. And now I'll, I'll, I'll yeah I'll let the felicitation happen. But after this, we will meet Prasadji uh, right outside here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you everyone.